So today I want to talk to you about Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. I've not discussed this movie since I've started my channel. I just recently re-watched it on 4K and it was my fourth viewing. So I've done a, a couple of re-watches of it since my theatrical experience with that movie and I thought I might just put a few thoughts and feelings out there about how I feel about this movie. When I saw it at the movies, uh, a lot of build up, a lot of um, expectations. I heard all the rumors, um, the divisive nature of the audience's reactions to the film. Zack Snyder had presented a good looking movie, but a lot of the people walked out of there either loving it or hating it. And I have to admit the first time I walked out of Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, I was absolutely pissed off. I was angry at this movie, man. I was so freaking livid, I couldn't believe it. I walked out of there actively hating this movie. The story choices that Zack Snyder and his producers decided to go with were strange to me. The whole Doomsday thing, granted they, re they revealed Doomsday in the trailer, which I thought was a massive misstep. The trailers themselves made this movie look awesome, and then that second trailer come out and Doomsday was revealed was like, ah, oh, dude, seriously, why did you do that? But for me personally, having just seen Man of Steel, where Superman was introduced to the world, and then, then this movie where Superman is portrayed as not very uh, well liked by the, by the general public of the world at this time, having him sacrifice himself and get killed by Doomsday was like a massive overstep. It was like too soon, literally too soon. Superman wasn't, according to this film, loved by the world and that is what Superman is. In the comic run leading up to the death of Superman storyline he was 75 years or give or take whatever the time frame was at the time of that that comics release. He was loved. He was a the super hero of the the superheroes. He was Superman, the, the granddaddy of of the generation. And when he died the the world mourned. It was oh, it was horrific and he sacrificed himself from this unstoppable monster that was terrorizing the world all the other superheroes were trying to stop him and failing miserably so having doomsday come into the franchise this early on massive error it was just i could not i could not deal with it so anyway um so superman got killed by doomsday and i was just i couldn't know um, and the whole characterization, I still feel that Zack Snyder has not actually caught the true essence of who the Man of Steel is. The first time I saw Man of Steel, I wasn't overly impressed. Great action, special effects second to none. Henry Cavill was fantastic in the role. For me personally, Christopher Reeve will always be Superman, so he always had that going against him, poor old Henry. But he does a fine job, good looking man, plays the role. But the story... The character of Superman has yet to be captured properly in these in this new DC universe. I'm hoping to God Jeff Johns riding the ship and Joss Whedon now involved with uh, Justice League will help this in some way. I know Superman's coming back. We all know it. It's not a spoiler. He will be back. And I'm hoping that there's going to be some kind of course correction and just make this guy right. My initial reaction coming out of Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice was just Oh, so many things wrong. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. <laughs> I did not know what they were thinking. Honestly, the way that he plays the role, even after my... That's the one thing, after my fourth viewing, my opinion on that still has not changed. Jesse Eisenberg has been terribly miscast. He's a great actor. I love him in The Social Network and the other things he does, like Zombieland, one of my favourites. But the way that he decided to characterise Lex Luthor... They, I could see why they wanted to do something different and make him more of a, you know, like a Mark Zuckerberg uh, CEO of a, you know, massive technical company. Uh, making him young and arrogant and a little bit odd. And then all those little mannerisms, you know, uh, it was just, no, I didn't like it at all. Brian Cranston would have been an ideal choice. And Kevin Spacey's turn as Lex Luthor in Superman Returns, awesome. Gene Hackman in the original Superman movie, Superman 2, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. It was, it was, he nailed it. 
So Jesse Eisenberg bringing something new to the table and they're having a bit of a go, a bit of a try of something different. No, it's not who Lex Luthor is. I didn't find him menacing it at all. So he is one of the uh, main things I still really hate about the new movies and I'm hoping that somehow, some way, Lex Luthor Senior will come back on the scene and take over the mantle of Lex Core and, and be the true Superman villain that we need and want. Because Jesse Eisenberg was just uh, no hope, uh, fake. No, no good. Coming to the theatre, I didn't like it. Waited for the Blu-ray release. Um, they started talking about an ultimate edition of uh, Batman vs Superman being released and all these extra scenes being put in, pumping it up from a two and a half hour movie to three hours. Two and a half hour movie is already a long slog, so making it even longer with more stuff in it was like a little bit daunting to take on, but hey, being on the home theatre format, you can pause the movie, you can take a break, you can go do a piss, you can watch it at your own leisure. So a long movie on that the home theatre format is fine in my books. And I was really curious about what they were going to put in, because as far as I was concerned, Batman vs Superman was a Batman movie, and my assumption about what was cut was absolutely correct. There was a lot of Clark Kent and Superman stuff removed. I do not know why. The movie was called Batman vs Superman. I know Batman is a popular character and he's had a good run of movies, but making it kind of really focus on, on Batman character, being a Superman fan was kind of a slap in the face. No disrespect to Ben Affleck, the guy absolutely nailed the role. He was, as many people say, the best thing about the movie. Unfortunately, Henry Cavill in that cut, the theatrical cut, was not given a lot to do. So, having seen the new cut on 4K, which, mind you, by the way, I, I'm a massive advocate of 4K. Ultra HD is just absolutely gorgeous, especially on an LG OLED 4K TV, 55 inch. Thank you very much. Gorgeous. So they put all this new stuff in, featuring a bit more of Clark Kent actually acting as an investigative journalist, um, a bit more about the whole uh, shooting thing in, what well, I like to say Africa, I can't remember where it was, but the whole shooting thing that Lex Luthor set up and getting people killed. Why would people think Superman was shooting people with guns, by the way? Anyway, moving on. Um, so they put more emphasis on the Clark Kent character, which I really appreciated. So. The movie as a whole generally flowed better and I still, on my first initial viewing at home on the 4K format, was still like, oh, that Lex Luthor man is just killing it. I'm still angry about Doomsday being in this movie. He should have come much later on and then Killing Superman was just like, oh my god, really? I still don't like it. But I enjoyed the movie more with the subsequent incorporation of the new stuff. And then after a little while, as I do, I like to rewatch movies a lot. I watched The Man of Steel, also in 4K, once again, also gorgeous. And then I watched Batman vs Superman as a follow-up. And I'm starting to feel a bit more appreciative of what Zack Snyder was trying to do. Um, still don't agree with a lot of the choices, but the movie was flowing better for me. I'm starting to accept the, the direction they went with, getting Doomsday in and killing Superman, because having seen the trailer re recently for Justice League, the new one, um, has got me a little bit more excited for it because the initial first trailer of Justice League looked crap. I'll, I'll be honest, I was like, I'm not looking forward to this at all. It's not getting me pumped. Like you watch the trailer, the teaser trailers for Star Wars The Force Awakens when that was coming out, those movies just got everyone absolutely pumped. You, you had goosebumps and, and tingles from those trailers and you could just watch them over and over and over again. So I was so excited for those movies and the Justice League trailer did not do that for me. So when I saw the recent one, which I've done a review on this channel for, um, a reaction, it feels a lot better after the, after the success of Wonder Woman and what they did with that movie. They've kind of had a light switch moment and gone back, reviewed the film, obviously uh, tweaked the trailer and released something that looks something a lot more resembling a comic book movie and a comic book movie that we deserve. Now with the unfortunate passing of Zack Snyder's daughter uh, through suicide which is absolutely horrible. I, my, I just, my heart breaks for the man honestly. Like end of the day you can 
you could pick a man apart for his movies and all the things that he does, but at the end of the day, he's a human being and his daughter's died and that's horrific. So he's done the right thing and he's taken time and moved on. So the, 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 the reins have been handed over to Josh Sweden. Uh, which is, in my opinion, fantastic news. I've been a, a Whedon Universe fan since Buffy and Angel and Firefly back in the day. Uh, his version of The Avengers absolutely owned me. That was fantastic. So I have faith in Joss Whedon. He's one of the best writers going around. I feel that his um, fingers dipping into the pie of Justice League, just doing all these reshoots, which I hear is a lot of connective tissue between action scenes, so it's not just going to be bang, 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 action, 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 and no connective s tissue, like he says. So he's going to uh, get the story straight, going to get the colour correction right, make things brighter, more fun, colourful, and bring a sense of hope to the film. And just seeing this last trailer has made me realise this is probably going to be good. So I kind of went in watching Batman vs Superman with a feeling of hope. And now that I've watched it again, I now know that going into Justice League, having the return of Superman, it is going to be an epic, epic moment, hopefully. And what they set up in Batman vs Superman could have a really, really cool payoff. So much like Wonder Woman being such a good movie made me appreciate Batman vs Superman a little more because Gal Gadot, <laughs> how good was she, seriously? And she was so fantastic in Batman vs Superman as well, like her, her brief parts in that movie really, really shun. So, um, so looking back with the success of Wonder Woman and hopefully the success of Justice League kind of retroactively make Batman vs Superman a better movie. Is that possible? Do you think so? I'm hoping so. So my fourth viewing, I did feel better about the movie. I, I've actually come to realize I do like it. Snyder's visuals are absolutely stunning. Um, if he's let loose to make a, a big long movie and not cut it down like he had to do for the release, the theatrical release of it, it was a much better movie. The ultimate cut is a much better movie than the theatrical version. So I've seen the, the, the ultimate version three times first time was I was still angsty about it, the second time started to appreciate the things that were in there and the fourth time retroactively speaking after seeing Wonder Woman and seeing the trailer for Justice League I do have, um, uh, I do appreciate it a lot more. Jesse Eisenberg still needs to be excised from the franchise somehow. Uh, there's going to be a Flash movie coming up soon and they have named it Flashpoint. So if you all know the story of Flashpoint there is an opportunity there to kind of twist everything around and change what needs to be changed, potential even recast. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Amy Adams is a great Lois Slane, but she is too old. Don't judge me, she's the same age as myself. But if they're playing Henry Conville as a just turned 30 and Amy Adams is in her mid 40s, it's just, for the future of the, the it's just for the future of the franchise, continuing on making more movies, the age disparity is going to show. Um, even Ben Affleck, as an older, uh, grizzled Batman, is kind of like a, a concern to me too. Like moving on to Justice League, he's already at retirement age and he's just forming the Justice League, and they've got so many more ab adventures ahead of them. How long does Ben Affleck got left in him making Batman movies? He's the same age as myself as well. We're middle age so um, love what he's doing Flashpoint is an opportunity and it makes me wonder if the DC guys have done that purposely I know they had a few issues getting a uh, director set for f the, the Flash a um, couple, couple have come and gone so Flashpoint is an opportunity to kind of switch things around so there um, my thoughts on Batman vs Superman the Dawn of Justice Ultimate Edition, 4K Blu-ray. I am going to love it. So we are going to wait with bated breath to see how Justice League plays at the theater. And I really hope you enjoy my videos and my ramblings. I like talking about movies, big nerd. So please feel free to subscribe. Um, Thanks for watching, take care.